You are listening to Lighthearted, the official podcast of the United States Lighthouse Society. My name is Jeremy Dontremont. Welcome. My co-host once again is Michelle Jewell Shaw, mom, teacher, photographer, and award-winning lighthouse volunteer. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jeremy, and hello to all of our listeners. This is episode 85 of Lighthearted, which goes out into the world on October 19th, 2020. The singer Jeannie C. Riley was born on this date in 1945. She was best known for the song Harper Valley PTA. The actor John Lithgow was also born on October 19, 1945. He once said, and I quote, time sneaks up on you like a windshield on a bug, end quote. (laughs) It's true. You know, each year seems to go by faster. I can't believe I'll be 39 next year. (laughs) I can't believe it either, Jeremy. (laughs) Well, okay. I think we should move on. Uh, Today on Lighthearted, we are going to listen to an interview with the author of what to me is a classic lighthouse book, The World's Greatest Lighthouses. She's also the author of quite a few other books, mostly in Italian. Michelle, please help me tell our listeners about Anna Maria Mariotti. Sure, Jeremy. Anna Maria Mariotti was born in Camoli in northern Italy, and she still lives and works there. She is the author of many books, articles, and stories related to the sea. Many of her articles have appeared in the Keeper's Log and Lighthouse Digest. She has also published articles in prestigious periodicals including Express, Nautica, Coast Guard News, The New York Times, and more. She's also written award-winning short stories. From 1999 to 2005, she collaborated with the Baruch Institute for Marine Biology of South Carolina University for research on tuna traps. Her passion for lighthouses began with Capo Sandalo Lighthouse on the Italian island of San Pietro and with the Lighthouse of Genoa. She's visited many lighthouses in Italy, on the Atlantic coast of the United States, in Canada, and in the Caribbean. Her lighthouse-related books include Tales of Lighthouses and Other Sea Stories, The Evolution of Lighthouses from the Origins to the Kingdom of Italy, and The Lighthouses of Tuscany. Most of her writing has been in Italian, but in 2005 she published The World's Greatest Lighthouses in English as well as in other languages. The World's Greatest Lighthouses, which was reprinted in 2011, features photographs of the most picturesque lighthouses in the world, along with text that describes each structure's location, architecture, construction, history, technology, and stories of lighthouse keepers. In 2006, the general command of the Harbor Offices, Coast Guard, and the Mediaset Group awarded her the Navigari Informati Award, quote, for her constant commitment to the dissemination of maritime culture in our country, unquote. She's also the founder and former president of an Italian lighthouse organization, and she's lectured frequently in Italy and the United States. I had the pleasure of speaking with Anna Maria Mariotti via Skype at her home in Italy in September. Let's listen to that conversation now. I am speaking today with Anna Maria Mariotti. Anna Maria is also known as Lila. May I call you Lila? Yes, please. It's my it's my nickname, but I love it. And where in Italy do you live? I live on the on the coast, uh, on the Italian Riviera in the north of Italy, near Genoa. My town is Camogli. Right. And uh, it's a little town, touristic town by the sea. It's a lovely town. And I I was born here. I came back uh, when I was older, and now I live here. This is the house of my family. Ah. I've been, I, I, I told you I was born here, and now uh, I came back in the last in the last year, and I want to stay here. <laughs> right. really, I have a beautiful view from my from my window on the sea. I can see boats, people swimming, uh, and, and everything, the sunset, uh, sunshine. I have a, really a beautiful view on the sea. I understand you first became interested in lighthouses because of the Capo Sandolo Lighthouse and the Lighthouse of Genoa, also known as the Lanterna di Genoa. What is it about those locations that inspired you? 
Well, uh, the first uh, lighthouse, uh, Capo Sandalo, is in Sardinia, and I was there on vacation, but this was very, a lot of years ago. I was in 1968, and I was uh, vacationing there with my husband, and I found this lighthouse. It was the first lighthouse I saw in my life, and we were invited by the keepers to stay on the terrace. We, we didn't went inside. They didn't ask it to. I, I, I didn't know what a lighthouse was, really. But I got so in love for this kind of construction, for this kind of life. When I saw these people, were about three keepers with their wife and children, at this time that were living there inside. And they told, they were so, people so kind, so quiet. They told me about their life inside the lighthouse. Uh, the to men told me that they went fishing and how they went uh, up to the tower or to the top. It was really something that touched me so much. And that I, from then, I started to get interest in lighthouse. I could not for my life or my job at that time to follow so much the lighthouses. Anyway, I had the opportunity just asking the keeper because I, I didn't know at that time that the lighthouses in Italy are all owned by the Navy and that not, are not open to the public. I didn't know that. So I asked the keeper of the Lanterna, the lighthouse of Genoa, and I asked him many, many times <laughs> until the poor man opened the lighthouse for me. And I went there one day, it was my birthday, I remember. This was also some years ago. And he took me to the top. That was very, very great because the Lanterna of Genoa as an, as an interesting story, is one of the oldest lighthouses in Italy. I think maybe the oldest, because it's been built two, two times. It's been destroyed and rebuilt, but uh, dates back to 1128, and then in 1545. So in, to get inside this monument is something that make you feel I don't know, like you feel the time that is gone inside this lighthouse. There are about uh, 352 stairs to go up to the top. I did that and I went there many other, many, many other times in the, uh, after that visit. And um, in, I don't know what to tell you more <laughs> because right. uh, uh, that are my first experiences with the lighthouses. Wow, it sounds inspiring. I think the Lighthouse of Genoa is about the third oldest standing lighthouse in the world, and it has to be very impressive. So besides lighthouses, you've written a lot about the tuna industry in Italy. What led you to that? Uh, what's so interesting about the tuna industry? This was because... Uh, I met a professor of the University of North Carolina, or South Carolina, sorry. He was on vacation in Sardinia, and I met him by chance. Everything happened in my life is by, or it's by chance. Mm -hmm. And we started, he was there for the tuna fishing, because in Sardinia there is a lot of tuna fishing. So we started to talk about tuna, and I told him that in my town we had a tuna trap. So he became very interested, and Mr. Bean, the professor, the teacher of the university, he came to visit me in Italy, and he went together to the tuna trap, and he met the fisherman. He was very happy of this, and he called me in the after time in the University of South Carolina to take a, a, a lecture on the tuna trap of Italy in that university. And that was very, very interesting and very honoring for me because uh, I could speak to the students uh, and tell them about uh, what is the fishing in a small town in Italy. And because um, everybody had forgotten that we had that tuna trap here. Mm. So I, I was, uh, I wrote also a couple of books on it. And then uh, I left because 
they started to make it like a touristic attraction. And I was not uh, like to love a touristic attraction like mm -hmm. that, because it's not a touristic attraction. It's a very, very ancient kind of fishing. So it must be treated like that. So when they changed that into a touristic attraction, I left the tuna trap. I didn't got more interested. I go when I went on with the lighthouses. <laughs> You also wrote two books on whaling, including one on the Essex, the American ship that was sunk by a whale. What led you to write about whaling? One day I was in the, in, in the USA and I went to Mystic uh, and there is an ancient whaling fishing which is kept like it was in the 800s. Is just for touristic reason, but was just kept. And there was also the last uh, whaler, American whaler, the Morgan, one yes. of the best uh, American whaler built in 1841, I think. Mm -hmm. And I started to be interested in this because the only thing is connected with the sea really interests me. So when, uh, in, after some time, I got into the the story of the exit just by chance. <laughs> I got a book and uh, I saw about this uh, because of course I knew Melvin's Moby Dick. I read it and um, this took me to the Essex and I contacted also the Harvard University and they sent me copies of the diary of the first mate of the Essex, mm. when, uh, on which there were no hand notes made by Melville, because Melville wrote the book, or it was a small book, of the first mate, so he knew everything about the Essex. Anyway, I got so interested, and there was also a movie on uh, the access, but was different yes. from what I had read and seen and found out. So I decided to write a, a book from my point of view, from what I have learned about this uh, whaler. And um, the story is really terrible. The courage of that man, incredible, because they all died only eight saved from the from the sinking. I decided to write it uh, the same, just because I I saw it from from my mind, from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I read the book uh, The Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrook, which was about the story of the Essex, and then the movie was made from that. I did not like the movie. No, no, it was different from the from the story, from the real story. It was very different. Yes, much of it was fictionalized. I would love to read your book on the subject, but that book's only in Italian, right? Uh, yes, it's only in Italian. Yeah. I would love to see it translated, or maybe I need to learn Italian. And maybe you can find somebody that can translate for you, because um, the only book I have in English is the, the one on the lighthouses. Uh, so you've also written about piracy, including a book on Blackbeard. How did you get interested in that subject? I was uh, living in um, with my relatives in North Carolina. I spent some time with them there. And one day we went to Ocracoke to visit the island. And at the entrance of the harbor, there is written that on that island, the pirate Blackbird was living and, and there he found his death or something like that. I was really interested. I was very curious. I am a very curious, curious person. And uh, after uh, some time, I, I went to the museum, to the Beaufort Museum. I went to visit the house where Blackbird visit, uh, lived in Beaufort in, for a certain period. He was living in a house no, house dated uh, 1709, and there are stories of ghosts, of course, around this house. I had the opportunity to enter, enter into this house and see a very old house and imagine the pirate living there during his period. 
So I had the, this opportunity to seize it, to take pictures that are in my book. I also read many books on uh, Blackbird, but I could not find uh, anything because uh, every thing I read that is said that was uh, really an unknown pirate. So I didn't know where to start this book. I bought also a book on, on all the pirates in, in the United States of the sto- with the stories of all the famous pirates. And on the story of Blackburn, I this started, this man was born in Bristol in 1618, something like that. I said, I found how to start my book. It was more novel than a historic book mm. because they are not really news and information on the real life of Blackbird. So I had to do something to make an invention of his life and uh, a novel uh, and, uh, and the history, to mix, mix it together. Right. This is one of my favorite books. Your first lighthouse book, or I think it was your first lighthouse book, was Tales of Lighthouses and Other Sea Stories. Was that your first lighthouse book? No, no, no. I I wrote before the book, uh, you have the lighthouses of the world. Oh, that's earlier. Yeah, that is, that is, was, I wrote in 2005. Right, okay. Because I've been contacted, I've been asked by an international editor that asked me to write a book on lighthouses. And he told me that he was going to translate it. Really, I wrote it in Italian. And while I was writing in Italian, another person was translating into English. I proposed to write the book in English, but they say that they preferred I write the book in Italian and in the meantime to translate into English. So every day, every time I had a new, a new page ready, I sent to the editor and they translated into English. But I, they choose, I, we choose together the lighthouses. Uh, they choose the pictures because mm-hmm. they bought the pictures from famous uh, photo- uh, sea photographer. Right. But uh, the story was mine. I proposed a certain number of late houses uh, that was decided together which one to use and which not. And uh, the both both books were ready together. And but I did, what I didn't know yet was that they were going to translate this book in other languages because it's been translated into eight languages, mm. even in Chinese. Wow. I've got I've got the copy in Chinese. <laughs> it was uh, French, Spanish, uh, uh, the English, you know, uh, mm, Greek. I don't remember now because I have a copy of of each. Uh, I have a copy of each, but in many different languages, and I've had a very great uh, success because as uh, I told you, I wrote it in two thousand five has been reprinted in 2011 and 2018. Mm-hmm. And now it's a very rare book. The World's Greatest Lighthouses is a beautiful book, and it's a very large book. It doesn't fit on my bookshelf, so I keep it leaning against the bookcase. You are not the only person that say that, because <clears throat> really it's quite, it's quite out of shape. How do you decide which lighthouses to include in the book? Because the editor wanted lighthouses around the world, I make a research and I've just got the most important of each nation. For example, there is the lighthouse of Genoa, the lighthouse of Leghorn in Italy. In Australia, I found out the lighthouse of Sydney, the McQuire lighthouse, mm-hmm. for sure you know it. I, I tried in each nation to take out an important lighthouse. So with the, with the editor, we made a list, so we decided which one to use and which not. But was, uh, my research was on the most important lighthouses in the world. You did a great job of deciding which ones to include. 
uh, in the United States, you had Cape Hatteras. Ah, uh, yes, Bo- I love these lighthouses. Yeah. I visited it twice. Body Island, also on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. You have Hasita Head in Oregon, which I've been to. It's very beautiful. Split Rock, Minnesota. It's a really good selection of American lighthouses. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. it is because um, Cape Hatteras I had visited already. When I was uh, staying in uh, North Carolina, uh, one day we went with my cousin, we went to visit uh, Cape, uh, Cape Hatteras when in the, was when he was uh, in, in the first position right and i i went again a few years ago to visit it when it was in its new position inside the, it was in, you know that has been translated inside of course yes and so i went to visit it in again in uh, 2014 a few years ago I, some many lighthouses i visited more than one time or even in the states one was Body Island uh, and uh, Ocracoke, the lighthouse of Ocracoke, I visited different times, mm-hmm. and also in Italy, of course. But um, other lighthouses, like in Australia, I've never been in Australia. I had only to make researches, and uh, in New Zealand, I had a friend in New Zealand, I asked him to make some research for me. And so I tried to do my best, and I thank you very much for your appreciation. Are there any other lighthouses that stand out for you, or do you like them all equally? <laughs> there is a, a small lighthouse in, uh, in Tuscany on a small island, Isola d'Elba. There is a small lighthouse, it's called Forte Stella, Star Fort, you can translate in English which has been built at the end of the 18th century. This is very nice, too. But I think I love all the lighthouses. I should mention that you and I met in Maine a number of years ago. You were on a U.S. Lighthouse Society tour at Cape Elizabeth, uh, the Cape Elizabeth Lighthouse, which is also known as the uh, East Light of the Two Lights. I was there helping to give the tour. You and I talked that day. It was nice to meet you back then. Uh, what was that, seven or eight years ago? Something like that? Ten, ten years Was ago. it ten years ago? Wow. <laughs> ten years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw the date on the picture. It was ten years ago. Uh, this is why I sent you my picture, because I was not sure that you could uh, uh, remember me. Oh, sure. No, I can remember talking with you that day. How many lighthouses are there in Italy, and have you visited most of them? No, not in Italy. There are 147 lighthouse, working lighthouses, and I have not visited most of them. I visited more lighthouses abroad than in Italy, because I told you in Italy is very difficult. Right. The mm-hmm. navy owns all the lighthouses in Italy, mm-hmm. and to go on a lighthouse, you have to ask permission to the to the navy. They give you the permission, but. I have forgotten to tell you that with some friends, five years ago, we uh, made an association. It was uh, the, the world of lighthouses, Il Mondo dei Fari, the world of lighthouses, I can translate in English. Mm-hmm. And I was the president. They named me president for my love of lighthouses. And they uh, made a visit, used to make visits to the lighthouses. And I am also a member of the U.S. Lighthouse Society, you know. Mm-hmm. And I've been traveling a lot with them. I went I, with the U.S. Lighthouse Society. I visited all the lighthouses of the east coast of the U.S., from Canada to Key West. Mm. I visited all the lighthouses there. Then I have organized for the U.S. Lighthouse Society, that was in 2014, a few years ago, a tour in Italy. And I went there as tour leader, and we went to visit the Tuscany lighthouses, and uh, on the small island too, Ligurian lighthouses, and then we went to Sardinia. And we visited all the lighthouses in Sardinia. They are very nice lighthouses. 
they were all built after uh, in the eight, late 800s. They, they, so they are all similar, but they are beautiful lighthouses. And uh, then, as president of the association, in this, the last few years, I've been many times in south of Italy, and I've visited many lighthouses in south of Italy. I've been last year. Last year I was uh, in a lighthouse in uh, Bari, that for this uh, 1500, no, not 1500, 150 uh, anniversary, anniversary of the lighthouse. It was very nice. There was, there was a lot of people. It was a great feast, uh, lovely. Mm -hmm. And this year, I had also organized a tour for the US Lighthouse Society to visit the lighthouses in south of Italy, Calabria and Sicily. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, for the COVID, we have postponed to the next year the same. So the, the tour is already ready. Sure, almost all of this year's tours were postponed. I'd love to do one of those tours with your involvement. I'm sure they're wonderful. Are there still lighthouse keepers in Italy? Yes, there are still a few. I don't know how many, really. I told you that the lighthouse is 147. Mm -hmm. But not all have a keeper. And when the keeper retires, the, the Navy do, does not send a new keeper on the lights. And his um, automatic light, is right, you understand what I mean? Automated. Sure, yeah, they're automated, yes. Automated. I guess my, my accent is not very good, I'm sorry. Oh, I have no trouble understanding what you're saying. And um, I know a lot of keepers because they are my favorite people, of course. <laughs> they are very, very nice people. You can believe it. Last Saturday, on the 22 of August, I went to Livorno, to Legorn, because uh, the lighthouse was open to the public with, of course, all the attention for the COVID, the mask, uh, all those things, a short, short number of people, but I went because now I am the president emeritus of the association. So I wanted to be there for this opportunity. And of course, I had the possibility to go on the top of the, of the lighthouse between one tour and another. I went alone. And the keeper, there was, there was the new president and the keeper, the ex-keeper of the lighthouse. We are very good friends. When he saw me, he was giving me a kiss, <laughs> even if the COVID, <laughs> and he was very. I was very happy to see him. He was. He was very happy to see me, and he took me to the top of the lighthouse that was forbidden, and he took me to the to the lantern. <laughs> so he opened the lantern, the lantern for me, so I could get inside. He took a few pictures. He opened the light, the lens. And I could see, I, I knew already the lighthouse of Legon. I've been there many times. But he, he knows my love for lighthouse. So when he took me up, he took me to the top. And he opened everything for me. No, you deserve some special treatment. That's okay. You know, I've written books about lighthouses, and sometimes it does get you special treatment. And that's... I think, no, it's the same thing. I don't pretend to be person, something important. But just as you say, just because we have written books, mm -hmm. we love lighthouses, we know keepers, we know lighthouses, we are little preferences. <laughs> but... Now and then, some of the lighthouses in Italy have been transferred to new owners, some of them for tourist reasons. How is that going? Uh, that, that is something that makes me feel bad. In Italy, we have a, a strange system. The lighthouse is owned by the Navy, I told you. But the building of the lighthouse is owned by the Demanio. The Demanio owns all the buildings that stay near the sea. It's called Demanio. And I cannot translate in English. There is not a translation. Mm -hmm. And it's like an association or national, um, something political that owns, really owns. Also, if I, my house was uh, 
by the sea was owned like building was owned by this uh, association so all the the buildings of the lighthouses are owned by the demanian so it's not the navy they sell the lighthouses but it's the demanian and they sell the lighthouses because the navy cannot keep them anymore they have not enough money to keep them in good shape. So they cannot put a new keeper, because if the keeper go live for retirement, they don't put a new keeper. So the lighthouse, you know better than me, that have to be followed, have to be repaired, have to be cared, to be, they have to take care of a lighthouse. Yes. And um, so they have decided to sell to private people. But it's not like the two lights of Cape Elizabeth, that one is a private residence. And we saw together, I, I, maybe you have seen many times, I saw only once, yes. it's a very nice uh, property. Here, the, because uh, they put uh, in on sale, uh, they put on sale, cannot remember the English word now, but they are put on sale. Auction? Auction, just all right, thank you. Yes, there is an auction, so of course, uh, it's very, very expensive. So, a person who keeps the property has to spend a lot of money to renew the, the building because the, 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 the tower and the lantern remain to the navy, they still keep uh, lighted the light on, but the building is owned by a private and a private person and to be able to repair the the building and to save money they usually transform it in hotel in, re, in a luxury resort we have an example in sardinia was the first one was a is a beautiful lighthouse really beautiful and um, many years ago, it was the first lighthouse put on auction by the, the manual, was um, transformed and is very, very expensive. You can believe it, 600, 800 dollar euros for night. Yes. If you want to stay there. Of course, uh, people from, from abroad came here, Chinese, Russian, etc. And now they sold another one in uh, Isola del Giglio, is an island off the coast of Tuscany. They sold another one. And this one also is going to become a luxury resort. Many others, some others have been sold to private people. And sometimes they make a museum, they make a, a center for underwater. They try to use in the best way, in the best possible way. But that depends also in the physical state of the building. Because if you have to spend a lot of money to, re to repair the building, of course, you have to try to take more money from the building. Mm -hmm. I, I hope to have been clear. Yes, absolutely. It's expensive to restore them, so it's good if they can generate money. But I'd rather see lighthouses turned into museums and not uh, luxury hotels. It's the same here. M many lighthouses in the United States have been sold to private owners. Some have worked out very well and others haven't. Some are very private now. Uh, you always hope there will be public access, that the public will be allowed to see them. Some of the private ownership has turned out very good and some of it uh, not so good. Yes, but in Italy is more bad than <laughs> yeah. good. But I know, I know that um, what I was explaining to my association, the Italian one I mean, it is that in the United States, some lighthouses are given to private association mm -hmm. that take care of the lighthouse. So the lighthouse can still live, live. I know, like um, Split Rock, I say one, to say one, Cape Hatteras, they became all the all the Point Loma. They are uh, given to private association and put into national parks. Right. 
so they are um, owned by the rangers. They, they are the rangers that take, can take care of the lighthouse. They are people of the association that can take care. They can ask a money to visit lighthouse. They can keep the lighthouse open to visit. Maybe asking a little money to go inside. That's right. Mm-hmm. To sell um, souvenir. They can make a little money to keep the lighthouse in order. That in Italy is impossible. That in Italy, and I always try, I've tried in all, in an all possible way to explain this to my people of the association, but they do not understand because they, that, that not they say the person to whom I explain that, which was the chief, he was the chief commander of the lighthouse uh, of the North uh, Tyrrhenian Sea. Mm-hmm. And now he is the pres- he, is, he, is re- he retired, and now he is the president of the association. So he's a, he's a military, he's still a military. <laughs> and because he is from the Navy, he cannot understand what I say. We have, we have talked a lot about that. And I've tried to explain what people do in other nations. But it, 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 it does not understand. Like um, the visit to the lighthouses. When I was the president, he was taking care of the visit to the lighthouse anyway. And he used to make visits of a couple of days, Saturday, Sunday, because in Italy people work and he want to take young people. So he was still working too. And I always say, why don't you try to make a longer trip? maybe a week to visit uh, all the all the lighthouse in Tuscany, all the lighthouse in Liguria, all the lighthouse in Puglia in the south of Italy, just to stay a week, not a lot of time. But he say now people doesn't want to spend, the people doesn't want to stay out of home for a long time. At the end I decided do not tell any don't tell any more. I finished my five years as president, and I I retired. I told you I'd been given the title of president emeritus, mm-hmm. but, but now I don't take it. I don't say anything. I just let them do what they want. One of the articles you wrote for Lighthouse Digest was about Bonaventure Venza, who was also known as Ventura, a former Italian lighthouse keeper. He seemed really interesting. I think he's passed away now. What can you tell me about him? Yes, he's passed away a few years ago. He was really a special person. He was quite old when I met him, and he was retired, of course. And um, I asked him, because I'm used to make to ask questions to the, to the keepers, and I asked him about his life, in, he was uh, the keeper of a beautiful lighthouse, now sold out, in a, on an island of Sicily. And uh, he told me that um, <laughs> his idea of the ghost in his lighthouse was very, very, very amusing because how he told the story. Because he, was, uh, he became a keeper very young. He got married very young, and he had no children, and he was living with his wife into this uh, lighthouse. He was in the lighthouse during the war, during World War II. And there, in, during World War II, there was a, a, a ship battle, a sea battle, a terrible sea battle in Sicily. A lot of people that, that died it was terrible. And um, he told me that uh, he started after that, after the war, the years after the war, he started to hear noises in his uh, lighthouse. People on up the stairs, windows open without wind, doors open. He was getting frightened, and his wife more than him. Anyway, he decided when he went, they went to, to dinner to put a more dish on the table. And when he did that, the, the noise stopped. 
And that was very, very funny. Mm. Very, he was so interested to his adventure that he used to tell this story to everybody. And I decided to make that is in the book uh, uh, story of lighthouses and other story of the sea. This is in this book. Mm-hmm. And he decided to to, to tell me the, this story in all this particular, in all possible way. And I found it was so interesting that I decided to write it down. Mm-hmm. It was a very, a very a lovely person. I'm still in touch with his nephew. We talked together yeah. because they are very, because I, I was so, um, I can say in love, even if it's not love, but I was so interested at Paul Ventura Venza. Yes. Very, very special people, very special men. Well, a person like that is living history, so getting to talk to someone like that is just so great. So your book, The World's Greatest Lighthouses, is it available now? Can people still buy it? In, in it's English? difficult. No, mm-hmm. no. I've been I look been looking in a, on Amazon. In Italy, is not available. In Italy, uh, is still available. I found one copy in Italian, mm-hmm. but you can find it in a special shop, in special libraries. And I told you, it's very it became very expensive. Yes. And in, uh, I, f- I try to look on uh, libraries online, like Amazon, like uh, university library. There are different libraries online, as you know. Mm-hmm. But it's, very, it's no more av- available. I'm sorry because it's a book that uh, has been very, very, very interesting and has been printed many times. Right. And, and uh, have had a great, great success. Well, I think it's one of the most beautiful Lighthouse books ever. Gorgeous. Thank you. The writing is excellent. There's a lot of information in it and many spectacular photos. I always know where your book is because it's so large. I keep it next to the bookcase because it doesn't fit on the shelves. You know the term coffee table book, like a book with beautiful pictures that you keep on the coffee table? Well, your book is so large that it could actually be used as a coffee table. So let me ask you, what has been your favorite aspect of your involvement with lighthouses? What have you enjoyed the most? The the age, the antiquity, the I like more the ancient lighthouses because they tell you something that is no more existing. Because as I told you, the lighthouses in Sardinia, they are all similar. And they are beautiful lighthouses, but you cannot very see very much the difference among them. They see there is some difference, but not. Um, for example, I love the Irish lighthouses mm-hmm. because uh, they have uh, something, I, I don't know, they are beautiful. They have an aspect uh, that is like, like a ship. <laughs> And they, really, I like more the ancient lighthouses, mm-hmm. and they give me a sensation. When I go to the Genoa lighthouse, I don't tell to everybody this. <laughs> when I go to the, the Genoa lighthouse, and I've been there many, many times, uh, I gave lectures inside, uh, I presented books, uh, I went there many, many times. and. Um, I feel like um, if the lighthouse was telling me something. <laughs> yes, uh, this is uh, strange. No, it's not strange. I say the exact same thing. I feel the lighthouses are talking to me like they have stories to tell. So I completely understand what you're saying. <laughs> completely, totally. That is very nice. <laughs> Lila, it's been delightful talking with you. And again, your book, The World's Greatest Lighthouses, is a classic. I'd love to see more of your work translated into English. I hope maybe that could happen. But at least we have this beautiful book that you wrote in English. So thank you for everything you've done for Lighthouses, and thank you for speaking with me today. Oh, Jeremy, it's been a great, great pleasure for me to speak to you and to see you again after so many years and to see that you remember me. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for your nice words for me. I, it's difficult to find uh, in Italy an editor able to ma- translate in English. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'll try. 
if I, for my next book, I'll try to find an editor that can translate my book so you can read another book of mine. I hope to see you again, maybe in this country, maybe in Italy, I hope. Thank you to you, Jasmine. It's been a very great pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. One of the lighthouses mentioned in the interview with Anna Maria Mariotti is the Lighthouse of Genoa in Italy, also known as the Lanterna de Genoa. The Lanterna, as Anna Maria said, is one of the world's oldest lighthouses. It was established in 1128 and rebuilt in 1543. One of the keepers of the Lighthouse of Genoa in the 1400s was Antonio Colombo, uncle of Christopher Columbus. The 1543 tower has survived bombardment by the French in 1684 and several lightning strikes. Today, the Lanterna Museum is adjacent to the lighthouse. As Anna Maria said, the Italian Navy, or Marina Militari, has been in charge of Italian lighthouses since 1910. If you're looking for information about Italian lighthouses on the internet, a good place to start is the Lighthouse Directory at ibiblio slash lighthouse. That's I-B-I-B-L-I-O dot O-R-G slash lighthouse. There are several pages for different regions of Italy, and you can find basic information for each lighthouse along with links to additional information. If you're looking for a copy of Anna Maria Mariotti's book, The World's Greatest Lighthouses, you might be able to find one for a reasonable price on the Advanced Book Exchange, which is abebooks.com. You might also be able to find copies on amazon.com. Thanks again to Anna Maria Mariotti for today's interview. I also want to thank Jeff Gales, Executive Director of the U.S. Lighthouse Society, for his support, as well as all the staff, volunteers, and members of the Society for all the great work they do to preserve lighthouses and their history. You can find out more about all the things the Society offers at uslhs.org. And you can also check out their social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're involved in preserving lighthouses or any kind of history, thank you and keep up the good work. We are all on the same team. If you listen to this podcast using Apple Podcasts, please rate and review us. You can send your comments and ideas to me at jeremy at uslhs.org. As always, thanks for listening and keep a good light. i